Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Tevi Troy. Morning. Thank you to Novartis for having this event, especially to Voss, putting this together, and for all of you for your good work on this. Um, I really are, am very impressed with the all-star roster of speakers we have here today. Uh, Senator Burr, I really enjoyed working with you when I was in government. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican. If you work on biopreparedness, Senator Burr is going to come visiting you, and he really knows his stuff on that. So. Uh, Robin, of course, really, I mean, the guy knows the industry inside and out. He was just, he, he was so knowledgeable on this subject. I used to tell him that he knows, uh, he knows pharmaceutical companies like my sports-obsessed son knows baseball teams. He knows their history, he knows their culture, he knows their farm system, although he calls it pipeline, but uh, same thing. Uh, Dr. Lurie uh, has really done a great job on this. I was fortunate enough to sit next to her on the plane, and um, I know she uh, had her laptop ready to go, and she, she had a, a lot of work to do, and uh, you, know, you can't waste a minute in this job, as, as I know from having, having been there before, but she, she spent a lot of time talking to me, and we really compared a lot of notes and, and had a, a good uh, bipartisan conversation. Uh, Governor Purdue, of course, and uh, Congressman Price, thank you both for, for your work on this. And then we've got Rich McKeon, who is just a, a close collaborator of mine and, and somebody I worked with very closely, I treasure that relationship, and thank you for, for coming here as well. Uh, a couple of the speakers have already mentioned the movie Contagion. It's kind of a, a modern-day horror movie. You don't need Freddy or Jason, you just need the germs. It's really scary stuff out there. And uh, w when I saw that movie, first of all, I was struck by, for the most part, how eerily accurate it was, except for one thing. They seemed to think that the letters CDC somehow stood for BARDA. But, uh, but other than that, uh, <laughs> other than that, I thought the movie was, was, really, uh, was really on target. And the scary part, the horror movie part of it, was the vulnerabilities. But what I looked at that movie and I saw it was the capabilities, the ability to develop vaccines, to develop countermeasures, and to do it in a rapid way, in a way that's fast enough to save lives. And in the movie, the, the key moment is when you are able to uh, identify and isolate the pathogen, and then the domestic production of the vaccine comes relatively rapidly. And that is really what we are here to celebrate today, those important capabilities, those capabilities that we're celebrating in the development and the inauguration of this important facility that really brings domestic cell-based influenza vaccine capabilities online. And it's so important. Um, and it's important from a number of perspectives. Uh, from, a, uh, from a sort of a public health and preparedness perspective, I remember being in the White House and President Bush was briefed about the shortage of vaccine one year. And, and he started asking questions about how our vaccine supply comes about. And he was told that it basically all comes from abroad. And he said, well, you guys better get some domestic uh, capabilities and quickly. And so this is really the fruition of that effort. Um, from, from, a, um, uh, from an innovation perspective, uh, um, it, it's really important to show that public-private partnerships can work and that we can develop new cutting-edge capabilities. Uh, from a public health perspective, cell-based is so important in terms of how it can develop uh, rapidly, how we're not dependent on the egg supply, and how people who are, for, per, for example, uh, perhaps uh, egg allergic um, aren't uh, susceptible or aren't vulnerable from, from something that's produced in a cell-based way. Uh, from a jobs perspective, which has been mentioned here uh, earlier, and especially in these tough economic times, when we're talking about four to 500 jobs here in, in North Carolina, I think that's extremely important and something that needs to be recognized. But lastly, and this is the point I want to end on and really focus on, is from a governing perspective. All the time you're hearing grumbling about Washington, about things can't get done, and one party doesn't talk to another. But here's an initiative that has worked and has worked from a bipartisan way. We talked about passing the baton from one administration to another um, under the watchful eye of Senator Burr in both administrations, of course. But, um, but it, it's, a, it's a, an initiative that it doesn't, party labels don't matter in this. It really, it transcends party because it's about the security and the safety of this great nation that, that we all love. And be, because of that, it really shows that you might hear a lot of grumbling about whether Washington can get anything done, but here you can see that Washington can get something done and can do something that is truly in the public interest and all of our interests. So for that, I thank you all very much.